So if I come over to this website and go to the address bar, click at the end, I go ahead and add four slash, then I enter some random characters, hit enter. It will bring me to this very page. Oops, the page can't be found. So I'm trying to search for a page who doesn't exist on this website. Now if I go over to this website and click at the end of the address, four slash, some random characters, hit enter. Here I've searched for a page who doesn't exist on this very website, but it has brought me to this very page where I can search for content or even visit some blog posts right here. So we are seeing this layout right here simply because I've instructed this website to behave in such a way that if users try to search for a page who doesn't exist on this website, then they should be redirected to this very page. And this is exactly what I want to achieve on this very website so this brings us to the purpose of today's video that is how to create a custom 404 error page a 404 page can enhance user experience on your website and help keep visitors engaged even when they encounter a page not found even though there's a search field here users can use to search for some other content on my website but this place still look boring let's go ahead and make it look something like this Without wasting further time, let's get started with a step-by-step -step tutorial. So to create a custom 404 error page, the first thing we are going to do is go ahead and create a new page. To do that, I hover on new, then I go ahead and click on page. Under add title, you can give it whatever name you want. For this demonstration, I'm going to use 404 page. Then I go ahead and click on publish and publish. The page is published. It should be noted that you can design your page using the Gutenberg block editor. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use Elementor. So I go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. Inside the Elementor editor, first of all, I'm going to take off this title. I don't need it. To do that, I go over to settings. Then under page layout, I drop down the arrow. Then I go ahead and choose Elementor full width. The title is gone. Now let's start designing our page. It should be noted that you can give it whatever design you want. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and mimic this same design here. So the first thing I do is add this image. For this, I'm going to insert a new section. So I click on add new container and I'm going to use this very one. And this way I add my image. So I go over to elements, then I drag in the image element. I choose my image from here, upload files, select files. I have the image here, I select it, then I go ahead and click on open. It is uploaded, I click on select. And I have it right here. I can reduce the height by going over to style. Then I go ahead and use the width like this. I think 50 will do. Next, I'm going to add a search field. I go over to elements. Then I scroll down to WordPress. I have the search widget right here from WordPress. I drag it, then I drop it under the image right here. Maybe I can add some text on top. So I go back to elements, then I drag in the text editor on top of the search field. Then I'll enter search here. If users don't want to perform a search, they can also go ahead and choose from my latest blog post. So what I do is I add a new container. I'll choose the very first one. Next, I go over to elements. You see right here, I have post grid. I just expand it. I'm seeing this widget as a result of a plugin I've installed. That is post grid for Elementor. Let me show you if I go to the back end of my website. Then I go over to plugins, add new, and the search plugins, I search for post grid. This is a plugin I used, that is the post grid by Radio Steam. You see that it's already activated. So in your case, you just go ahead and install and activate it. You can use whatever Elementor add on for post grid you want. I exit out of here. So in here, I'll just grab the first one and drop it right here. From here, you can choose whatever layout you want. Then number of columns, 
maybe I want to use four columns like this but I think three columns looks cool awesome next I go over to query build make sure the source is set to post then limit at the moment it is set to nine so I'm seeing nine blog posts I want to make it six awesome next I go over to settings this is where you can disable some of the field selections you don't want for instance there's a title on top here if I don't need it I just go ahead and disable it from here that is section title as you can see it's gone I need it so I bring it back I don't actually need the except so I'm going to go ahead and disable that and I think the rest of the settings are fine next is section title I want to change this title and this way I can do that so I'll say read from our latest blog post next I go over to style under section title first of all I'm going to go ahead and change this color you see that is blue I want it to match with the colors of my website so I come over to dots click on the globe icon then I choose this color and that is all what I want to do here I collapse it then I go over to post title now if I hover on the title you see that the color is blue I want it to be this same hover color right here the normal color is cool so I go over to hover title color on hover I'll choose my pink color awesome I collapse this then I go over to metadata that is this information right here I want to change the hover colors as you can see the hover color is blue so I go over to hover and I'm going to go ahead and choose the same color and finally we have this button I collapse this then I click on read more I will change the hover color as well so text hover color is going to be this going down the border reduce color is going to be my color 4 as well perfect now everything is set I go ahead and click on update now we are done with the design of our page if I exit out of here I click on the hamburger menu then I click on view page and this is how my page will look like in real time so now if I go to any random page something like this hit enter it will still take me to this boring page which we don't want so now it's time to assign the page we've just created as our 404 page to do that we are going to install a plugin and this is the very plugin we are going to install smart custom 404 error page i'll leave a link to this page in the description down below so what i do is i'll just go ahead and copy it i exit from here then i go to the back end of my website before we install the plugin if i hover on appearance you see that i don't have anything like 404 page so let's install the plugin i hover on plugins click on add new under search plugins i paste in the name of the plugin we are going to install i have the plugin right here i click on install now then i go ahead and activate the plugin is installed and activated successfully now if i hover on appearance you see that I now have 404 error page. I go ahead and click on it. And the general, you see that we have page to be displayed as 404 page. I drop down the arrow here. Then I choose the page I just created. Remember I said you can use whatever name you want. In my case, I use 404 page. I select it. Then I click on save changes. All is set. Now if I go to the front end of my website, then I just enter some random page for slash some random page hit enter I'll be redirected to this very page awesome with this users will not have their boring page anymore on my website and this will help boost user experience on my website so that's it on how you can create a custom 404 error page for your website I hope you found value in this tutorial if you did kindly hit the like button subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and also enable the notification bell so that you don't miss my future videos in the meantime stick around to watch any related tutorials from the channel keep watching and i'll see you in the next one